Joshua Way at Redmond. Just an aside, congratulations to our basketball team. All those early morning practices, blood, sweat, and tears, the coaches getting mad, paid off. So I, I, it's my pleasure to introduce to you a very special guest in our school today. She's been here for the last three weeks. Her name is Pauline O'Keefe. Can you wait? Because you really blend in there. She's a former grad from Redmond. Woo! Woo! And, uh, Most of all, she has so much inspiration, she inspires. And so for the last three weeks, she has been evoking a lot of emotion from some of our grade 12 students who are going to take that emotion and present it very briefly to us this morning. I'm just going to have them uh, shout out their names. Uh, Jean-Pierre D'Angelo. Elena Vulgaris. Denise Cabini. Jonathan Broderick. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My name is Kiana Bucci. Emily Greco. Diana. Marina. Davis Stewart. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so as I said, my name is Kiana Bucci. I'm in grade 12, and I'm one of the co organizers for today's Black History Month assembly. I work at a program called Street Level where I we me and the youth work together on these paintings that you see here. And I also work with Paulina. Paulina is a 29-year-old Toronto entrepreneur, project manager, spoken word artist, community worker, program facilitator, youth, youth activist, and mother of two, who has been working and performing across Toronto for the last 10 years. The founder and artist, artistic director of Gorilla of the Word and former coordinator of Rhyme Poetry Collective, Revolutionaries Honoring Your Mind's Eye. Paulina is influenced by her diverse descent and her work in multiple communities, bringing her passion to the page and the stage. Here is Paulina O'Keefe. Good morning, one man. How are you guys doing today? No, 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 no. A little bit louder. This is the second assembly. Y'all have some extra sleep in your class. Don't lie. How are you guys doing today? Yeah. Who's ready to celebrate some black history? Yeah. Again, got you out of first period for a little bit. Who is ready to celebrate black history? Yeah. All right, all right, okay. So my name is Paulina, as you heard, I'm a spoken word artist. Um, if you haven't already, you might have seen me walking around the halls on a Thursday, all February. I've been working with um, Mr. Lee and Ms. Murphy's class, um, doing some spoken word uh, teaching and teaching some black history for Black History Month. And uh, we are going to, I have some lovely students from both classes who are brave enough to come up and share some of their pieces. Um, this is our contribution to Black History Month and celebrating uh, black achievement and black contributions to the building of society, uh, which is a lot. Uh, at Redmond, so we really appreciate the opportunity. Um, shout out to Mr. Lee and Ms. Murphy for uh, indulging me in their first period on a Thursday, and Ms. Boynihan for bringing me in. Um, as uh, she said, I am a Redmond alumni, so just over 10 years ago I was you sitting in there in that fantastic uniform that you guys are wearing. It's probably not as cool because it's 10 years ago. But um, yeah, so I'm really excited to be here and um, do a little, a little poetry with you guys and uh, my friends up here. All right, so, <clears throat> oh, before I start, so this is spoken word. How many people know what spoken word is? This is a very educated school, I love it. Um, for those of you who do not know spoken word, uh, the audience plays a very significant role in spoken word, so this is not your uh, average day at the theater. Okay, though we know golf clapping and such. Um, I need you to get hype, who knows how to get hype? Like, not, not, not like that kind of hype, like a, like a, like a, let's just say Chris Brown didn't make it into the country last night, and we were at a concert. How high could you get, though? Let me hear the hype. That's the hype level. All right, so I need to hear some snapping. If you hear a piece and you like it, can you snap for me? All right, all right, your snapping level's all right. Um, can you clap for me if you hear something you really like? Ross, like, mm. Mm. and since we are in a Catholic school, 
possible, if you are really feeling it, you can you can shout out hallelujah because a lot of people do. Right? So you will hear a lot of pieces today that may speak to you, uh, represent black people, or represent black history, represent black uh, contemporary people and currently that are making black history as we speak. So if any of that appeals to you, do not stay quiet. I will recommend slash ask you please to be very hype about it and let the uh, teachers and principals and everybody know how much you love black history and what we're saying, all right? All right, so let's get this started. Yes, and you may say you go for a little bit too. Black bricks, black bricks, black bricks, black bricks, black bricks, black bricks being whitewashed over. My history is being whitewashed over. Can't see myself in these pages, white glossed over. We got more than 28 names, so I don't need more than 28 days. Say, we need to celebrate us. We need to celebrate us. Right. For more than just 28 days, because last time I checked, there are more than just 28 names of great black contributors in this society's foundation. We are very much the cornerstone. I said, we are very much the cornerstone. Black bricks. Black bricks being whitewashed over. My history is being whitewashed over. I can't see myself in these pages whitewashed over 10 years out of high school. And I still hear complaints of textbooks missing faces that look like us. So we are feeling naked without knowing. So clothe us in our glory. Tell them about Africville and how we own land instead of just how we were owned. Tell them about Lincoln Alexander and how we shape laws instead of how we just break laws. And tell them about Dudley Laws and Rocky Jones and how we fought for ourselves out here. Great blacks in the great white north, great blacks in the great white north, great blacks in the great white north. Screaming out, we the door. We the North. Screaming out, we the North. We were always seen as the last stop on the last stop to freedom. Underground railroad tracks covered the tracks of slaves escaping slavery in the South, but it wasn't always free up here in the North either. Black migrant workers on the come up helped to make Canada. Black migrant workers on the come up helped to shape Canada. They want our manpower. They want our culture, but sometimes they just don't want us. I still see young boys being criminalized for the color of their hoodies, let alone the color of their skin. Poor lost souls, they say, never would have been lost in the first place if we celebrated them, and their fathers, and their mothers, and their ancestors. Black bricks building foundations, don't whitewash them over. More than 28 names, so please give us more than just 28 days. Dear Baynard Rustin, in 1952, you walked the streets as one of the leaders of the black civil rights movement, but in 1953, you were thrown in jail because of your sexuality, what the straight man called a sick mentality. I know this because this is our duality. I know how our communities turned against us and they forgot those, they, they forgot us, the ones that fought for them. The average person will never understand the way that your parents looked at you when you said, Mom, Dad, I'm gay, but I do. I know the fire that engulfed your life. I know how your day turned into a night. And I know how strife was brought on with a knife held in the hand of someone who didn't understand that who you love is not a sin nor a choice. When Martin Luther King, when Martin Luther King stood in the spotlight and people called him a revolutionary, did he take one second to think of you, his former friend, did he take one second to think of you? Rotting in a jail cell for being yourself, imprisoned for a sexuality, what they called an abnormality, when you were given the choice to be yourself, a gay man, or given the choice to be yourself, a black man, you chose both, black and queer. Thank you. Thank you, Maynard Rustin, for showing me that discrimination doesn't run just skin deep. Thank you for showing me that men can be hated for more than just what we see. Thank you for showing me that black history isn't just about being black. It's about people like you that knew that equality for all does not mean we let our gay brothers and sisters fall into the background. Suicide. Black and queer, Maynard, you are the bridge between our communities, those that spend way too much time being denied our opportunities. Thank you, Baynard Rustin. A thank you is what I want to say. It's because of you that I walk free today. Dear Eartha Kitts, 
Born on a plantation, you made your way to New York. Talented, beautiful, successful, a megastar. You paved the way for future stars. An activist was blacklisted from the professional community. Ostracized because you publicized the Vietnam War. You said, you send the best of our country off to be shot and maimed. No wonder they take part. I guess they didn't want the blame. Dear my Angelou, even though you couldn't fly because your wings were caged, you chose to see no boundaries, allowing every word to soar like a mockingbird. Through the bars for every ear to hear, you spoke not a fantasy, simply the words of humankind. You taught us a story of more than a gray scale. You saw for those who couldn't see color, and you sang for those who dared not speak. Through every fight, you represented the light and revealed a power of courage hidden within a repressed self, and that is stronger than any weapon. We will continue to read your everlasting words, not because they have given us an answer, but because every time they remind us of our nature, which is so pure in itself and so far from what we've become. Dear Fred Hampton, I want to say sorry on behalf of the ignorant. Then and now, I'm sorry you were viewed as a threat, since back then feeding black children was considered a crime, and so they pushed and they shoved until May 26, 1969, the day you got persecuted for stealing good humor bars. And so the newspaper headings started to fly. No quarter for wild beasts. You should let them die. The Chicago police were given an order to approach all Panther suspects prepared to shoot. I'm sorry they wanted you dead. You had a wife and a son. You were a good man. On the day that you died, you fell asleep to the voice of your mother. And so at 4.45, they stormed the apartment, fired two bullets into your head. I am sorry, but your message, the cause, will never be dead. No slavery without violence, the teacher said. Why should anyone be beaten down because of the color of their skin? Who are we as white people or as anyone to think of others that are beneath us because of, of the color of their skin? You always were struck during the day because of the color of your skin. I remember this one time where I read that you were struck five times before breakfast, leaving you with permanent scars that you carried on for the rest of your life. Lashes, scars, burns, and bruises. And all because of what? Because you, Harriet Tubman, stood up for yourself. You refused to be treated like some type of property, and even with all that physical damage, which caused seizures and brain damage, yes, you were the main help in the Underground Railroad. Helped free slaves. Born into a family with no hope, no sense of living, but you always had hope. Dear Laverne Cox, to start off, I'd like to say I love your work on Orange is the New Black. As the first openly transgendered person to be nominated for a Golden Globe, I am grateful for how strong you are. From attempting suicide at 11 to gracing the red carpet, I am so happy you are still alive to tell your story. Happy you are happy. Happy you are making girls, women, young and old happy. That they do not have to live up to the, to the expectations placed on them at birth. Happy you have risen from the rubble to dismantle gender expectations. Happy you, have, you are focused on what is important, not what is or is not in our pants, not what is expected of us due to our gender or sexuality, not a person's success or, fa or failures, not the pigment of one's skin, but rather the, the discrimination people face due to these things. You draw attention to these issues, and for that I am grateful. You represent trans, you represent blacks, you represent everyone who has had a struggle. Dear Laverne Cox, thank you. Dear Tupac, raised on that west side, west side till you died, born in New York but kept thugging in LA. Yeah. The, <laughs> thug life counted across his stomach, but it's the thug that kept on loving. I see no changes, he woke up in the morning and he asked himself, would life be better if he just blasted himself? Yeah. Talking about things that are still happening today, cops, right, cops popping black hands like it's acne. I repeat, cops popping black hands like it's acne. Yeah. But that's just the way it is. Things will never be, this, be the same. Inspired by a young black youth, even a young white boy trying to jump in a booth. Now I'm spitting like I'm missing two, trying to get a by message on his message. Young thug, Chief Keith, Little Reese. Is that even a message? 
You didn't die, you're still alive in the music today. I hear you in the ones like J. Cole, Kendrick, Drake, and the others with the message. Told things to understand the struggle, I understand the whole struggle. <laughs> Selling Brocks to get mama off the block, passing the rock to work on the jump shot, handing, handing the mic to make that hot, talking to respect themselves, you had to love each other, you couldn't do anything but love each other. It yeah. seems like we still have a miscommunication that's lost in the translation, doesn't matter whether we're black, Asian, Latino, yeah. Caucasian, the matter is that we come together as a nation, it won't change your life, we have to be patient. I hope you hear, see, hear, know what I'm saying? The blacker the berries, the sweeter the juice. A new genocide.